Yep. Okay, big dog. See you later. Big and shallow, little out far. Which one do you reckon is going to go off first? Oh, this is like the holy grail of sharks. We're going to waste no time on this. I'm not going to talk much because I'm buggered. I'll give you a full rundown after we get this big girl back. <laughs> Just as I'm trying to pack stuff up. <laughs> the shallow old door. We're going to strap in for round two, guys. Holy crap. Oh, this day is getting wild, I'll tell you what. Well guys, we are back out on the blue stuff again, and I'll tell you what, it has been so good to be getting back out here. In amongst all the wind and waves, we have got one day of absolute glass out. The forecast coming up as of tomorrow blows up to 30 knots. The swells on the outside of the island are upwards of three metres by the end of the week. So that will cook the boat fishing for quite some time. It'll take a long time to settle down after that. What I've got behind me here is a massive bait ball skipping all over the surface. There's no predatory fish around yet. I'm just kind of waddling my way up the island, but the bait is absolutely everywhere. So I'm hoping today, the day before the big blow, everything goes into feeding mode, especially this afternoon as that breeze just starts to pick up and we might get stuck into some red hot action so plan today is to waddle up get into absolutely anything and everything we can throw a lure at whether it be on the surface or underneath we're going to spend the middle of the part of the day throwing some big baits off the beach and then towards the end of the day as we're coming home i reckon the surface activity is going to fire because we've got this big southerly blow coming the water's going to chop up it's going to get a little bit nasty but that's usually when stuff really starts working out on the surface. So we're going to focus on the surface fishing this afternoon. So we've got a plan. We've got some areas to have a look at. I'm still on a high. Uh, if you haven't seen the last episode, go check it out. I'll leave a link up in the top corner here. We ran into my first ever whale shark and uh, I've planned on going all the way over to Western Australia to see these things. Tao's a bit dirty on me because she wasn't in the boat at the time, but uh, I'm sure she'll get over it eventually. But it was absolutely incredible. A Fraser Island whale shark is the only things you hear myths about, and to be the one of the few lucky people who get to experience that, I am truly... I don't know, there must be some good karma heading my way because I never thought it had ever happened. And it did, and I'm still absolutely stunned, shocked, and happy that I got to experience that. But anyway, enough talking. Let's go up the island, find some bait, find some fish, get stuck into some action. Let's do it. around for what feels like forever probably the best part of 45 minutes looking for a school tuna we finally found one let's see oh you're right up front of the boat here I'm gonna see whether we can get close and oh I threw on the wrong spot they're here too See whether we can get close enough to get one. They're obviously going to be real skittish at the moment because there is absolutely no wind whatsoever. So I've actually downsized my leader. I'm only running 15 pound and a tiny, tiny little metal. Look like long tails, which would be good. If we can get one of them, I've got an awesome little recipe I've always wanted to try. But um, yeah, if they are long tails, getting one on 15 pound litre might be a bit of a challenge. But that's all right. I like me a challenge. Oof. Just 
sporadically popping up everywhere. Maybe if I let this sink down. Need to find a concentrated school. They're kind of popping up willy nilly wherever they feel. Keep chasing these guys around for another 20 minutes or so and then I think we might head to the beach, drop a shark bait and wait for this afternoon breeze to kick in because I guarantee once there's a little bit of chop on the water these tuna should really really fire up. So we'll have a bit of a play here, see if we can get one, if not, into the beach. Must be feeding on super, super small bait. Can't see anything in the water. Oh, yep. There we go. It happened. It happened. Okay. Got light leader, light drag, and it feels like a bluefin. The gaff is coming out, and we're gonna chase him down. So, I really don't want this to get sharked. Oh, he's going under the boat. Come on, buddy. Come on. It's so hard to really put the herd on a fish and get it up past sharks when you've had to downscale your gear just to get the eat. Here he comes. Come, buddy. He's got the head shakes like a, like a blue. And it's a Mac. Ah, oh, bummer. That's all right, that's for a shark bait right there. And I'm not putting my hands anywhere near that in the water, because I've already had two sharks near us today, so. Okay, see a Mac tuna down, it's our fresh shark bait. Let's go drop him in the water straight away. Well, there it is guys, our fresh little Mac tuna that we just caught. Not even two or three minutes old, so that is as fresh as it gets. So is fresh best will be the question when it comes to this one. I reckon that looks pretty tasty to me. So we're gonna slide him in the water. Oh, all those fresh bloody juices coming off. And uh, yeah, head on into the beach. Cold drink and relax, I think. It's gonna be a hot one to serve. Okay, little fella, down you go. New trace with new swivels. Brand new 300 pounders, or well, 360 this time. If uh, you haven't seen the episode where I got annihilated, I'll put a clip in right now, check this out. Okay, he's back, he's back. Took a while, but he came back. <laughs> okay. It's definitely got it this time. A little bit of weight there. Yep, there he goes. There he goes. Okay. Here we go. I'm loading up now. Yeah! <laughs> Buddy! Oh! Yes, yes, it's what we want. Oh, here he goes. <laughs> oh, there is no better sound. Wow, that's on full strike. And he is smoking. Oh, 
Oh no, something just broke. Oh, I felt it. I felt it go dunk. <sighs> no, no. Oh, that is shattering. That was the one, guys. That was the one. I can see my double. I can see my wind on. Oh no, I've got a trace on. What's happened here? It's my wind on. It's my trace. you're kidding you are kidding it wasn't even me it's a goddamn swivel no that's meant to be like 360 pounds and I'm only running 80 pound mono so there is no way in hell that I could have put 300 pounds of pressure on that Oh, that's one of those really expensive Japanese ones that I use for GT fishing too. It's pulled it clean out of housing, it's actually... Oh, it's not even anything I've done! Damn it! Damn it, damn it, damn it! So we we're 100% good there. Ah, oh, God damn it. Okay, the trap is set. Let's head on into the beach. Wow, look at this. This water is just magic. Wow, crystal clear. Well, hopefully, we get a big one in this sort of water today. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Okay. Well, let's get this rod and reel up on the beach. And uh, sort out the rest of our gear. Oof. Beautiful. Nice little spot just there to set up camp for the day. The tide's coming in, which means I can leave the boat nice and close. Oh, that water is magic. Might even sneak off for a swim yet. We'll see how we go. Okay. Beautiful. Unpack the boat, get her anchored, set up and relax. Well, there's day camp set up, chilling under a shady tree. Some clouds coming over, which is quite nice because it is so hot out here today. Got a little scouty anchored in a gutter there. The tide's coming in, which is perfect. Means I don't have to swim or walk too far out when we drop our second boat. We got the big girl set, ready to rock and roll. Probably got, I don't know, two thirds of a spool of braid left. And uh, yeah, she is ready to rock. We did a pretty long drop this time out on the second contour just before it goes real deep in hopes of finding a real good fish or shark, should I say. And if that doesn't work, we'll give it a couple of hours. If that doesn't work, we'll bring it into this shallow drop off ledge here because generally you do see big sharks cruising along that edge, but they're not hungry for some reason like I've thrown big baits out of the boats at them I've casted big slabs of bait off the beach at them and they just kind of nose in nose out and bugger off so I don't think the real big ones you see in close are a worry at all which is why I don't mind swimming to the boat most of the time because I don't think they're actually hungry but uh yeah hopefully it's not too long till we hear that sound so I'm gonna kick back with a cold drink Chillax for a bit and uh, 
we shall see you when Big Goldie is screaming off. Well, it's been about half an hour now and I've just got this feeling that everything's too still and too calm, too nice. So we've already got one bait out deep. I'm going to tempt fate and throw our second bait out, the real, real big dog Mac Shooter. And uh, I'm going to put that one in shallow. So this could go one of two ways. We could definitely get a real big shark on either rod. We could get a big shark on both rods at the same time and be in a world of hurt. But something I reckon I can handle. So <laughs> we're going to jump in Scouty. Oh. And throw our second big boat out. There she is there, Big Mackie. So pull the anchor up, get out there, dump this second rod and uh, see if we can't locate where these bigger sharks are going to be, either in close or out deep. Either way, two baits in the water, doubling our odds, covering more ground. It's all positive. All positive. As you can see, we're really not that far from the shore and uh, you can actually see the bottom here. It's only about four or five metres deep. So we're going to drop one just out here and uh, yeah, see which one of the two goes off first. Got an inkling, might be the shallow one. Okay, big dog. See you later. Oof, big splash. Okay, we set two big dogs. One all the way out there with a fresh Mac tuna. One just out on the colour change out there with a couple of day old Mac tuna. So we'll see. Big and shallow little out far. Which one do you reckon is going to go off first? Throw a comment below. I want to see which one of you guys can pick this. My money's on the big dog but this one has been out for a while already so there might be one sniffing around. Ooh, you never know. I just hope one of them goes off real soon. Fingers crossed. Okay guys. Who gets the long drop? Who gets the long drop? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that is a long way out. So what I'm going to do is take up the slack. Get out on this sandbank. This is white. Let's set this hook. <laughs> yes. Got him. We got him. We got him. Yes. Oh, I hope I didn't get too much water on the lens then. <sighs> Hey, 
We're on. We're on. There she goes. Woo -wee. Actually taken line. <laughs> yes. Oh, how good. That didn't take too long, maybe an hour. Okay. Quickly put this in the rod holder while I get the gimbal on. And harness up. Keep it tight. Let that drag off a bit. Clip her in. Yeah, it's coming up tight again now. Oh. Okay. Yep, we are tight. We are tight, baby. <laughs> oh, I love this. You can't get a fish past the sharks. This is definitely something to uh, fill in the day, that's for sure, because they're bloody savage out there today. Oh. Here's a long way out. Feels good. Feels solid. Feels better than the one that we got the other week, that's for sure. But, early days. Let's just hope this other rod doesn't go off. <laughs> well, we're fighting this one because this is uh, the best part of 400 metres out already, I think. By the time it took that run, Oh. Oh. I have to waddle back up near the esky and grab a drink of water. I think it is bloody hot. I think that's a good idea. Okay, we're gonna head back up near the esky under the tree, stay hydrated, and try and get in the shade. I think I'm in for a long battle here. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's... Oh. oh, that is better. That is a lot better. Slowly trickling off. I think he's uh starting to grow. Whew, that's a good feeling, that's solid, that thing. Put a bit more pressure on him. We've got a lot of line out. So I'll try and stop him going any further if I can. crackling Whew. it is hot oh there he goes oh it's full sat down in the harness <laughs> March flies, having a bit of a feed on me. Oh, there he goes. Oh, wasn't happy about that. He 
he's a give me a fair old guy. Ooh. Get stuck into this fella and I'll tune back in. We got a bit more braid on the old spool, I think. <laughs> we're gonna be a little while. Okay, we're about the 15 minute mark, and this guy is actually starting to wake up a bit and give me some serious herd on 80 pound. Oh. Every time I get him in a little ways he just shoots off again here he goes loading up again oh. I'm actually low gearing him in because I can't can't gain anything in high gear this is uh yeah He's either a very energetic shark or he's going to be a solid one. He's definitely got some weight behind him. Definitely got some weight. Here we go, loading up again. Oh. strike he's actually holding me up right now <laughs> wow that's good if you can put your whole weight on it you know you know you haven't got no six seven footer that's for sure <sighs> He just keeps doing that, I'll get 30, 40 metres and he'll just run away with 30, 40 metres. Oh. Okay. Well, you know how this fight's going to go down. It's going to be a big game of give and take, I think. There he goes again. Just doesn't. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting absolutely nowhere here. This is insane. Well, he got a pretty small tide today too, so it's not as if he's out there sitting in a heap of current or anything. There's basically no current in the bay here at the moment. Every spot I've stopped on, I haven't really drifted that far, so. It's not using a massive current advantage against me. <sighs> to make himself feel heavier or anything. So. Yeah. Oof. Big head shakes. Not a happy boy. <sighs> oh, those of you who guessed that the furthest rod would go off first. Now you gotta drop a guess as to what species this is. See whether you can get two from two. <laughs> oh. Big head shake and change of direction there. Oh, keep tight on him. Running fully barbless hooks as always, so you still gotta keep that line nice and tight if it hasn't penetrated and the tip's just hanging on in there you will drop a fish pretty quick hooey okay well i'm gonna check out again I'll check back in in about 15 minutes i reckon we should be maybe 100 meters closer see how we go okay legends we're probably at about the 35 minute mark I've got my mono back on, had uh, the GoPro overheat, so I couldn't film anything for the last 10-15 minutes. 
because I actually had to pull the battery out and uh, yeah it's all good though it's all good so I can actually uh, see the shark out there now so now the problem I've got is is it gonna go over or under my other line so Let's see what happens here. It's going to the right. It's pretty big. Not gonna lie. It looks very solid. I'm just trying to see what's happening here. This one's pretty loose, so I'm hoping the braid's actually on the bottom just resting sharks carving right which is fine because our boat is riding close so we don't have a boat to contend with oh there we go just turned around wow that's a big that's a very big dorsal it's a very big dorsal I think could possibly be something very special guys possibly I want him to go left hopefully when he hits that sandbar, yep, no, he went right. Oh. Go left, go left, left, other way, other way, other way, other way. Oh my God, it is, it's a hammer. It's a hammer. Oh, this is like the holy grail of sharks when it comes to land base. <laughs> wow. It has been many, many, many years since I've caught one of these. And the only thing I'm worried about now is, is he tangled up? And that would be a yes, he is. Okay, that's all right. That is totally fine. Woo -wee! Okay, this is a pretty special moment, so I'm gonna waste no time in getting the hook out of this guy and releasing him oh, we're just going to drop everything and make this happen okay guys oh i'm puffed we're going to waste no time on this i'm not going to talk much because i'm buggered and we got to work quick so i'll give you a full rundown after we get this big girl back but cheers in the shallows, I'm cooked. I think I got heat exhaustion. I'm just dying here. I feel sick. Anyway, we're gonna get this done. There's a big girl there. Happy hours swimming in the shallows. We're gonna make this happen. Let's go. It's only just hooked. With a barbless jayhawk in the corner. Just like that, it's out with a tiny pair of pliers. That's a big shark. Look at a big girl. Look at that. That is epic. That is absolutely epic. Guys, we're gonna waste no time here and get this big girl back.
Hey guys, I'm just going to give you a bit of background as to why that all had to happen so quickly and uh, there wasn't any mucking around with the shark in the water. So basically there's a couple of different types of sharks when it comes to their genetic makeup I guess you'd say. And uh, hammers kind of fall in a range called pelagic sharks which are along the lines of makos, great whites, basically any vast ocean going shark. And they're the ones that actually do need consistent water flowing across their gills to stay healthy. So um, if you ever do catch or tangle with one of those, it is extremely important, extremely important, should I say, I can barely talk, to get everything done as quick as possible. No mucking around. Don't bugger around with photos and yee-hawing and all that sort of stuff. Just get your hook out, get it back in the drink, and on a merry way. As you saw, that one swam away real good. And um, it wasn't an overly long fight, probably about 35 minutes on 80 pound so it wasn't as if I was putting heaps of pressure on it to get it in if you're running 200 pound or something and had mad drag they'd be exerting a lot more effort putting pressure against you that you're putting pressure on them so that's why I generally don't run extremely heavy lines when I'm shark fishing because the more pressure you put on them the more pressure they put on you in return and the quicker they wear out and generally I find you actually don't get them in that much quicker on that excessively heavy gear. They just seem to fight a lot harder. So. Yeah, a little bit of background for you. Anyway, this subtly change has just kicked in. A little bit of wind coming in. So I'm uh, soaking wet, sweating, dying, out of breath. Gonna have a much earned cold drink of water. Clean this camp up a bit. Everything's a bit everywhere. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to it. So I'll clear this gear up and I'll come back to his. <laughs> Just as I'm trying to pack stuff up, <laughs> the shallow rod's gone off. That is very slow. Oh, I'm gonna let that eat. We're gonna strap in for round two, guys. Holy crap. Oh, this day is getting wild, I'll tell you what. Oh. Holy, I'm gonna harness up. I dropped my GoPro in the sand with the mic on it, trying to get it ready in a hurry. So guys, if you like these videos, share the love, cause it's probably 700 bucks. It's uh, down the drain just there. Once the sand and corrosion sets in, I dare say this camera is gonna be gone. Okay. Put that up the strike. I'm gonna wind into this one. Come on. Oh no. Spat it. No. After all that, I let him run for ages too. Oh, you're kidding. How did he drop that? Oh, felt a bump. Is he going to come back? Chewing on that for a while, so I'm gonna slowly walk backwards into some shade. And we're just gonna see what happens here. I don't know whether there's any bait left, but we'll give it a couple of minutes, see what happens. I let that thing run forever and a day. And somehow, still managed to avoid the hook. 
Although I am running a circle hook on this one because I didn't have any more J hooks at home. So I just grabbed an off the shelf inline circle shark rig, which I don't generally like using. And uh, yeah, I think it might've come and bit me in the butt because that would have been a very big shark, that one. That was a very, very, very big bait. Ooh. And you hopefully won't hear the wind through the uh, mic, but that suddenly just kicked in and got a big rain head kicking in over here. So I'm gonna keep packing up this gear. We're gonna leave this one out and see whether whatever picked that up will come back and, and grab it again. So we'll keep doing our thing. A little bit devastated on that. Could have been two colossal sharks for the day. That would have been sick. But you never know, might still happen. Keep packing up. We'll come back to that one. Well guys, we've made the push off the beach. As you can see, just behind me there, that really black cloud. That's that subtly push that I was talking about this morning coming in. And over there, you can see my shirt in the wind. It's uh, picked up to a good solid 10, 12 knots already. So that whole weather system has finally hit the coast. So I knew I only had about half a day to make this happen. And we made it happen big time which is so good we got an absolutely epic shark so uh with that said we are going to head back but with our eyes open for those tuna schools that we were busting up before so with this subtly push we've got that wind on water happening and it'll chop up just a bit the white caps are starting to kick in now and with that the fish should fire up so we're tying some bigger top water lures and hopefully on the way back get stuck into some tuna and secure our bluefin for dinner so it's the plan it's a dream let's make it happen well guys just like clockwork exactly what i said has happened this wind's come right up it's uh yeah a good 10 knots here and the birds are all out searching there was a blow up out here just before oh, oh there you go mac tuna there now but that's not what we're after we're uh we might have a oof, there you go, you can see all the fish on the sound of there. Uh, we might have a bit of a cast at these guys, maybe grab one or two for bait, throw in the freezer, but I really do want to try and find a bluefin. So we will keep looking as long as we have to. We've only got about two hours left of daylight though, but we'll keep on the hunt, see what happens, try and find these tuna. Oh, he's all over it. Yep, come on, come on, come on. Oh, he was all over it. Oh, as soon as it landed, he was on it. Ah, oh, bummer. Bummer, bummer, bummer. I missed my chance on that one. <laughs> that was a good fish too. I think that might have been a uh, blue. It's good. Good to see they're after the bigger profile stickies. So means they're feeding aggressively compared to this morning when I couldn't even get one to eat unless it was on 15 pound with a micro lure. It's all looking good. There's a big rainstorm behind me, so I'm going to really try to make this happen as quick as I can because that's uh, going to come at us real quick. Well, guys, that brings another day to an end. We gave it our best shot on the way back in. We found the tuna, they were feeding exactly like we thought they would be, but they were just too flighty. Every single time I came up on them on the boat, they dived down and come up ages and ages away. Even the birds were struggling to keep up with them. So that is all good. Sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. But we had an absolutely epic day regardless, saw some really cool stuff and that hammerhead was just the icing on the cake. I have not caught one of them since I was probably in my 20s, which was a long time ago now. And um, to see one that big and healthy and to see it swim away so good it was absolutely awesome. So glad you could join us on another adventure, guys. And uh, as always, keep safe, be happy, smile as much as you can, and see you on the next episode.